Hello and welcome to season three, episode 25. And today I'm going to be showing you how I make freestanding lace. And one of the things you may not be aware of is that there are many different colors of tulle. And just as every house needs a good foundation, making freestanding lace does also require a nice foundation. And it is built upon fabric. You may not know that. If you know that, go ahead and give me a thumbs up in the uh, chat. And hello, everybody. We got Marianne, Amy, also known as Better Days, Wendy Harper. And, uh-oh, uh my chat just disappeared. Amber Angel, hello from Oklahoma. Winnie Peterson from Northwestern Wisconsin. I have to turn off my air conditioner. It's cooling me down before. Waves, Amber. Hello from New York, Madeline and Linda. Hello from Illinois and Winnie and I'll uh, try to keep up on the chat, but it's getting harder as more of you pop in as we go. So I'm going to take down my pile of bridal illusion, also known as tool. And you can get different types of this as well. Let me try to put this somewhere where it is tame. remember okay so I uh, was looking for my wedding veils and I couldn't find them until the very last second which is why I had such a pile and I went you know what I think it might be a little entertaining this is one of the wedding veils that I made and it has little yo-yos with buttons holding three different color tool onto the veil as well and with cosplay and <laughs> steampunk and I'm sure I'm leaving something out other wonderful fun activities that people have there's need for different colors of bridal veil do any of you have a, a black wedding veil I don't I don't have any I really wish I did because I was asked by Sherry I believe if you're in the chat today go ahead and bow because it's because of her that I'm doing the freestanding lace and I know that there are others of you that have been hounding me to do this for years but you know the time was right even though we are currently out of our stick and rent stabilizer which is used for freestanding lace normally so I'm gonna discuss what you would do if you don't have our products know that they were expecting them in about 60 days to have it back in stock so in the meanwhile you can try to adapt to other stabilizers and I'll tell you how I think her name was Sherry <laughs> it's an S name I know that okay I was going to make wedding veils on the show and I didn't get around to it. I do have a couple wedding veil tutorials in my YouTube channel. Should you be needing to make a wedding veil before I get around to posting another one. Now, if you've ever seen high quality, expensive bridal lace <coughs> and priced it, you know that this is one time, <clears throat> excuse me, when it pays to make your own lace. But it is time consuming. I'm not going to tell you it's not. Noreen, 60 years ago, your mom used to make them, oh, back when we did it all by hand. And I created the creative feet and I made it so people could sew pearls, <clears throat> excuse me, right on the edge of the veil, like you see here. 
<clears throat> so if you're interested in learning how to sew wedding bells and put pearls on the edge, be sure to check out the episode of, <laughs> what's the name of the show I was on? Do any of you remember the name of the show? It's the brother show. It's, uh, it's so easy. So I'm one of the episodes on It's So Easy, showing you how to do wedding bells and how to embroider a little motif on the actual veil material with your regular sewing machine. I have too much left over from last week. There we go. So I'm going to choose a color that coordinates with the pattern that I designed. And I want you guys to know that there's a group, there's a, several of you have, uh, have fun being sarcastic in the chat. And I keep promising a t-shirt with a design on it. And I came up with this. So this on a shirt. Give me a thumbs up if you like that idea. It'll be one of the things in my merch shop that for some reason is turned off and I got to turn it back on. So there it is up close. And it's all staticky because you guys kind of make a little bit of noise when you get sarcastic in the school or inside of these Zoom chats and things. Below that is the lace pattern that I got ready for today. Hi, Shirley from Alberta, Canada. Oh boy, I turned that air conditioner off and it is just immediately not cool in here. Let's see what my overall air conditioner is set at. I'll turn that down so I don't become annoying complaining to you guys. So what you see here is the lace design printed on a sticker. And I have a very light color on purpose. This is one in purple. So what you do in order to print on a water soluble stabilizer, and you, you can try this with other water soluble stabilizers. As I mentioned, you tape it to a piece of paper. And before you put the paper into your inkjet printer, since you don't really know where on the paper the design's gonna print, print on the paper first. And you can see there's no printing on this at all. And then you use regular old scotch tape and tape it onto a piece of paper. And if you're not using our brand, then you wanna make sure you print it all the way around. With ours, it has a release liner and it's firm, so you don't have to worry about it. Then take a, a pencil, don't use a marker as I'm doing right here. And after you, before you print it, sorry, I'm a little bit loopy. I know you guys are thinking she's always loopy. So you, you put it this, this side up on a blank piece of paper and you insert it into your printer cartridge up with this side up and the arrow pointing into your printer. Then you print and then you know where you know which side the printer is going to print that design and it prints it out. Then you tape your stabilizer over it. And with, as I mentioned, our stick and rinse, you just need to put a couple pieces of tape up here. And you can also use the liquid base glue and just put some liquid base glue down here. You can also use other adhesive products for mounting photos and photo albums as well, because on the back side of the stabilizer, it's trash, it's our release liner. Found my liquid based. Okay, so today I have it. So then you would, after taping the stabilizer down, put it back in your printer, this side up with the arrow pointing in, and when you, it goes through the printer and it comes back out of the printer, Oopsie, wrong one. <laughs> you end up with a sticker with the same design that's on the paper. And you can reuse that piece of paper as many times as many pieces of lace you would like to do. So this, in essence, becomes a, a pattern support system for making 
extra pieces of freestanding lace. And you know what's funny is that I didn't even think about the fact that I was wearing a bunch of freestanding lace today. I feel like I'm being guided by the angels. And what I'm going to do and why the color is very light is because generally when you make lace, you're making a light color thread. But if you're not, if you're using black, well, then it doesn't really matter. But you need a color then that's going to show on black tulle. And in that case, we may want to put something white behind it. You know, I'll figure that out for you guys. There is or there are printable papers available. In essence, they're white. And I know that I was exposed to one. Um, Sulky has a, I don't know, I haven't used the product. It doesn't look like it would be uh, as, as good for this as I, because I looked at it and it's kind of fluffy. But there is a printable paper that I can have access to. And I'm thinking this might be a perfect opportunity to use that on dark fabric so that you can see the ink on the white paper because the stick and rinse is clear and it will in essence then be whatever color it is on that fabric and might be difficult to see. So I'm choosing one of these teal-ish colors and I'm going to pull out my Octi Hoops. If you have the Octi Hoops, go ahead and do a thumbs up. Tell people what you think. They are so much fun. I've been a little bit stuck on the Octi Hoops lately. They come three to, this, to a set. And I was going to mention, if you can't find tool in the color that you want, you can use alternative materials also known as fabrics. Some people don't like hearing the word material used as a descriptor for fabric, but that's what we used to call it. When I was growing up, it was called material. You go to go to the store and get some material today. I'm like, yeah, and now it's fabric. So this is a type of mater material or fabric that you can use. It's, it's see-through-ish, almost like tulle. Tool is has a looser weave to it. And this garment that I'm wearing today has everything built on tulle. And I'm apparently wearing this inside out. <laughs> Not my better day, you guys. The thread choices to use for this would be based on what kind of effect you want to get. So you'll probably want to get a combination of different, not colors of thread, but thicknesses of thread. So that when you want the stitch to drop into the fabric, here's another fun type of material or fabric to use for this type of work. No, this is not inside out. Okay, I'm not lame. It's just designed that way. I think it would have been cool to have it on the outside. It doesn't matter. So you don't want something where you have a lot of thread. You want it open and I've got something else to show. I was thinking we might be able to play around with something like that at some time. But not today. How hot it is it? How hot it is it? What is the temperature in your area today, you guys? And give me a smiley face that shows you, shows me how you feel about how hot it is in your area. This would be fun to make the lace on, wouldn't it? little too reflective for the camera. This is another one. Is it too reflective? Oh, this is good. I think I'll be able to see it better. Let's see. I will decide based on which one the sticker shows up best on. 
And this is the one I'm going to use. So I peel it off the paper. And you can see how it just kind of disappears on the sewing machine. You have a white sewing machine, you'll see it better. <laughs> see, if your sewing machine is white and this is under, is beneath it, well, it shows up. But I don't have a white sewing machine, do I? I could kind of tape this to my machine today and cut a hole so you guys can see better. Give me a thumbs up if you want me to do that because I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to not show you the right thing by using this. Let me see how it will work. It's really kind of hard for the camera. I think, I think I'm going to have to tape a piece of paper onto my sewing machine. Isn't that funny? It's gonna be interesting. I I don't I'm I could just go get that giant sewing machine and bring it in here, but I was so excited to get it out of here because it takes up so much table space. <sighs> Decisions. Tape paper onto my machine, or maybe I should, because then you guys can see that you can do that. Or I get out the destiny and put it back on on. Nah, I'm not gonna go through that. So I'm going to take a little look and see here. This is a good way to do it. So I'm going to go like this so I can kind of see where it's really just the throat plate we need open. Oh, I don't want to waste the pattern. Let me get another piece of paper. So what I want you guys to do is tell me in the school where this today's class is showing up and tell me what color lace design you want me to have for you. And I'm going to upload a pattern this is for the VIP group I'm sorry I should have said that so in the VIP group they're going to get this pattern and next week next week we're going to make a purse using this design either embroidered or quilted because you can trace around this design and you could quilt with it as well using the octi hoops you could also take this fabric, this tool material, and trace the design on top of this with a wash away marker so that after you've Im stitched your lace, you just rinse it under water. And the bridal fabrics are pretty resilient to moisture, so you don't have to worry about ruining it by getting it wet. And all of that ink will just wash away. In order for the ink to actually become connected to the fabric, the fabric must be wet when the ink is wet. So when we rinse this away and the fabric's dry, it just washes down the drain. You think it showed up enough? I don't need to tape that. Well, I'll give it a try and see if it does show up good enough, then I don't have to take the time to do that right now. I'd rather not. So then it's choosing which of the octa hoops to use for the pattern that you're doing or sewing, stitching. What would you call this? Sewing, stitching? It's not quilting and it's kind of embroidery, but it's not. It's hot and humid everywhere, eh? I watched someone from Canada talk and uh, too much apparently because I went, hey, eh? <laughs> how you doing, eh? And how you doing, A, from everyone in Canada, and hello, everyone from Australia that's watching, and it's so nice that we can all come together no matter where we live, isn't it? So I need to get this onto the fabric and then attach to a hoop that doesn't have an inner and outer ring. This is the Caterpillar light tablet that I use a lot. 
I'm not sure I'm going to use it now, but let's just see. So it lights up. And this design would fit easily inside of the largest frame. I know we got a lot of new people today in the chat and also watching or lurking in the background and a lot of new members of the school today when I announced this lesson. So it does have a large appeal. And I'm glad to provide it for you. So if I can go down to the next size hoop, and I can, that's easier to work with. And it's also less likely the fabric will start to give into the actual design that you're stitching out. And that's not, I can't show you a purple one because I don't have, it's not printed. So see the sticker is clear, it's not printed yet. For those of you who want me to sew with purple thread. Although I could sew with purple thread right now using this one. This is another one of our stabilizers. This is our another, both of them are made from the same substrate and unique to everybody else's water solubles. So this is our stable rinse and it is out of stock as well. Some of you already have these stabilizers, so you should look through your, your arsenal and see if you already have it and then you're, you don't have to wait. And I did try to find another brand because I know I bought, I, I bought more to test to see if I could use them for the stick and rinse and they, they just didn't stand up to the test. So this is completely different in texture. It doesn't have any stretch to it, so it locks the bias in your fabric and it becomes more stable. And that's why this one's called stable rinse because it stabilizes your fabric like no other water soluble and it's smooth so you can see really well when you're doing things like this and i honestly did not try to not use a product that i got off amazon recently i just couldn't find it anywhere i probably went yeah it doesn't work it's not the same and i probably tossed it in the i'm never going to use it drawer So I'm just going to cut a piece of this off that I can use. Get this large roll out of the way. Remember, whatever you use must be able to wash away. And remember also that the tool or the fabric itself will not wash away. So. If you don't have that, the thread will be built on nothing and will just, just fall apart and not even exist after you're done. I don't need a very large piece. I just need a piece big enough for that. So I'm just going to cut myself off a piece. I'm going to cut in a despicable way. You know, if I leave this kind of fabric on the floor, it won't be long before Tinkerbell is in it. And no matter where I would keep my bridal fabrics, she loves bridal satin. She loves bridal fabrics. I had this plastic tub and she had jumped into it. I couldn't find her for a while. That's when she was younger and uh, she had gone in there. If you don't know who Tinkerbell is, no doubt she'll pop up from her nap and say hi at some point. So I need to put the sticker on the fabric. Your choice, Bridal Illusion, which is more like what this is now, it's termed as, is it because it's almost there and not quite there, or or the tool. I have yards of Bridal Illusion on the floor right now. <laughs> Here you go. So do you want me to build it on this, or do you want me to build it on this? So say T for tool and A for illusion. No eye for illusion. Hi, Christy from Northern California. I spent a lot of time there in my life. So what do you want? Oh, I could do purple. I don't have to do teal. But the whole point is for 
you to understand that you should try to match the color to the color thread that you're doing. However, if you don't match the color to the color thread that you're using, then it's easier to see if you didn't cover. So it's really up, up to you. So if you're going to sew on purple tulle and you have purple thread, you may not notice because it's purple on purple that you didn't cover it up completely. But if you use teal on the sticker, then it's really obvious that you didn't catch it all. I think I'm going to do that. I've decided. And now you're all happy because you're getting me to, getting me to sew with purple. Well, not all of you. I know. I know I've got my other... I feel so odd because it's like you don't need a lot of the fabric because we're just making a piece of lace. I'm used to making things and putting a design on it. And that's why they call it freestanding because it, when you're done sewing it, it has... It is a thing that can then be appliqued or stitched down on something else. I wanted to practice this so bad. Gold metallic. I wouldn't create lace from metallic. So, but you can do this kind of work with metallic thread. Absolutely. So I'm like, what goes on the hoop if this doesn't go on the hoop? Stick and tear goes on the hoop. Because we need to get stick and tear. We need to get something to get the fabric to move with the frame. And since there isn't an inner and outer ring and you don't stretch your fabric in there, we're going to use stick and tear and get it secured to the back of the frame. Now we do, when stick and rinse is back in, you can adhere it to the back of the hoop. But I want to show you how you can handle it using whatever water soluble you currently have in your sewing room as you wait for the stick and rinse. And when we're about 30 days out from knowing for sure the stick and rinse is coming back in, then we'll start letting you guys pre-order. But right now, even though some of you have been asking to pre-order it, I'm restricting that because I don't like taking people's money before I can send something out. It stresses me out. I can get you on a waiting list, but as long as you're part of the newsletter list or part of the school, you'll be notified as soon as the stick and rinse and stable rinse products are back in stock. And I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> I can tell you that. I'll have a coupon. So you don't feel like it would have been nice had she come out with coming back with, you know, we had a coupon when it came back. Know that I, I will. Um, I definitely will. What am I looking for? If I only had a brain. <laughs> it's just not something I do every day. So we're going to take a pen of sorts. hate wasting this one. It's my wash away. Oh, no, this isn't. This is my iron array marker by friction. So it's a marker instead of a ballpoint pen makes it roll a lot easier or spread out easier than the ballpoint I really like these if you don't know about them I'll, I'll put a link in the description below the video so that you can get a whole set of the friction markers from my affiliate store and we're going to go ahead and, and now use you can use a rotary cutter a technical knife if you have a cutting mat and cut that and you could have done that with the hoop as well as the ruler of sorts. Or you can then just use your crafty paper scissors and cut around the design. I mean the, the line you drew. You know what's so cool about this cardigan is that I bought it and I wore it and because I really, really felt bad about how I was dressed when I was in town one day and I never really felt like I could wear it. I couldn't tie it all the way until it closed in front and now I can't. I put it on today and went, oh, look at that. 
I must have lost weight and I didn't even know I could wear it. So it used to make me look larger than I am. So thank you for the compliment on this. I got it in downtown Prescott. If you're ever in the area, got some cute little gift shops or clothing stores in the downtown area. It's dangerous to go down there if you're not wanting to spend money. So now I'm going to position this on the back side of the hoop. And we do that by folding this back. Oh, you put metallic thread in your clay, Amy? How, is that what I'm reading? I'm kind of picking up a little bit. I was admiring your pottery again today. I love those little cacti salt and pepper shakers. So cute. Now, I just line up the edge after folding back the release liner paper. This is the paper. This is a 100% polyester fabric, so it's not going to wash away if I were going to, if I stitch through this, it would make really ugly lace. So what I'm going to do is use this and hang on to the paper for a minute. And stretch this out. And this is how I embroider on wedding bells as, as well, you guys. I'm starting to feel like I know what I'm doing. It's okay, Judy, you're not late. I'm not bossy. Okay, so now I got it laying nicely, but now I want to make it really tight or taut. So you do that by stretching the stabilizer and then rubbing it to the surface of the back side of the hoop. And this is the surface that we have. We have this unique flow pattern on the back side of this trade secret material that I use to make these hoops. And that makes it so stickers stick to it and then can peel off of it as well. And the, the ridges are the, the right depth for making it hold on. And then because it doesn't hold on completely like it would if it put it on your sewing machine, you have a really hard time getting it off, just like you would if you had a jelly jar and you try to get the label off. And then each frame has these holes in it. And the holes, you can see, do not go all the way through. They're designed for these handles to drop inside and then stay and stay in the hole so that you can then draw without using muscles to keep that handle in place. And you don't have to push down against the sewing machine at all. So it's very easy on your hands and it's a good thing because I've been overworking my hands as usual. Oh, you put lace in your clay. You should try some metallic thread. Hey, might be cool. If you're wondering what the composite or, or what is inside of metallic thread, it varies depending on the thread that you get. But originally they were made with meta metallic thread, has nylon lingerie thread inside of it so that it stretches and it's strong inside because the metallic is a, it's like a, a sheath that surrounds the inner thread. The metallic itself is weak. So nylon will melt inside the kiln and you'll just be left with the metallic flex running through your clay. You could actually maybe braid it a little bit and then make flowers and see what happens. When you make something like that, I wanna see it. So you've been using our stick and tear on your magnetic hoop or yeah my dad's hoop at all was just like this and everybody everybody misses that that hoop system terribly so by stretching it my dad is the inventor of floating your fabric because he invented this and he was the inventor of the hoop that lets you so on baseball caps to embroider. And you can embroider with the octa hoops using, on a baseball cap, by the way, using my dad's similar science. 
Well, if it's really old and it says SIA, it's, it could be stick and tear. And if it is, well, that's one of the mean, neat things about it is it sticks really well. So there's a, there's a, there's a sweetness when something is perfect, when it does what you want it to do really well, and then doesn't make something else really difficult later on. And the stick and tear, unlike any other adhesive back tear away stabilizer, it holds really well to our hoop so well that it won't come off until you remove it yourself to you peel it off. And other brands will hold onto the hoop as well, but they'll, they won't stay. They'll, they'll start to slide off and, and then the fabric starts to get squished in and it gets all messy. So other brands thought my dad was using paper for the stabilizer. It's not, it's polyester fabric that is uh, pulped and then brought back together in a non-woven air filter fabric for air filters, which is why we use it for mask making as well. All right. So now I got to lay the, I can't remember what I chose, a purple. Oh yeah, here it is. Got my glasses ready. <laughs> yeah, Goo Gun works to get adhesives off. Just a little stinky and make sure you wash your hoop afterward because it's can't be good for you when it smells that strong, I would think anyway. So I'm going to take this Bridal Illusion, also known as Tool, and Wedding Veil material. You can find this in like the little kids fabric area too because they make tutus out of it. And you can make a tutu in a few seconds with my pearls and piping foot. I may do that soon. I think I'll do lightweight fabrics series of videos. What am I doing? Close up. So I, if I lay this down on top of that, it's going to be stuck to the stick and tear. What I want to know is where the sticker is going to be. And I'm going to cut a window in this where the bridal veil fabric will go. So I'm looking at this, I'm going, all right, we've got, let's see. Well, there goes that. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and do this. And I can cut it here. And I need some here. That's just barely, just barely within the border right there. And what I'm drawing on is not on this, but on this, on the white one on the bottom, the stick and tear, kind of showing the borders. And it's nice to have a good, a good area of stabilizer remaining. The more stick and tear you can leave in the hoop, the better. There we go. That's just barely in there, but we can always trim it. There we go. That's working better. Don't let it get stuck on there. <laughs> Stick and tear holds so well. There we go. So now I know what I can cut away. And I'm looking for my technical knives, but I've removed them from the area, so... Craft scissors. <laughs> if you're waiting on a thread dispenser, know that we have some parts that are needing to be produced. So hopefully tomorrow, but more likely Monday. So here are my craft scissors and I find this very enjoyable. Just go and then start cutting away the stick and tear using that guideline as the opening and the reason I kept the release liner so I could stick this back on it and use it as a patch for an embroidery for another day
So this is the release liner side that you put it on. And when you embroider something and you go and pull it away, you end up with a hole. So then you can patch it with our stabilizer. And even if you were to sew through the stabilizer where there's more than one layer of our stick and tear, it will not gum up your needle. Okay, I'm thinking straight now. Got the scotch tape to remove. Whoopsie. If you've purchased any of our stick and rinse products and couldn't get the release line, couldn't thought, oh, it's just plastic. There's no stabilizer there. That's usually what people think. Is you put scotch tape on the corner and then you peel it back and it will separate from the release liner. But you do it at a corner. And I got an extra piece of tape. I brought it in here just to show you that, but my left thumb is still a problem. So here you go. So a piece of scotch tape. And you just kind of put place it diagonally across. And then you peel it back. And that's a really small piece. We'll see if I get it. I get it. It's amazing how awkward I am with this trigger thumb. <laughs> I feel like it's almost done being that way, but see? And there is the, the stabilizer, and this is a release liner that you get, you're going to toss. Well, peel that off, and I'm going to apply the veil to the sticky side. be nice if it was not wrinkled. It is wrinkled because it was shoved in my suitcase from shows. But the nice thing about this is you do have the opportunity to raise it and lower it and reposition it. And then, and then you won't know there was ever any wrinkles because it'll be held onto that water-soluble adhesive on the water-soluble stabilizer. So if you're wondering how you can do this without our stick and tear or stick and rinse right now, you could use a water-soluble adhesive as long as you test it first uh, on the water-soluble stabilizer and make sure it doesn't dissolve. So this is just a perfect product that took years to perfect. <laughs> Thumb. Owie. And now I'm going to place this. And even though I can see through this, do I need the light? I think I'm going to use the cutter pillar. Just to make it so I can see better. Does it help? And we're, the goal is, it would help if I didn't have all of these, uh, my quilt patterns underneath here. I'm going to slide this away. This top mat is my cutting mat with lines, and then they also offer the edge-to-edge -edge mat, which they've been sold out of. Uh, know that this is June 16th of 2022, and we're still dealing with supply chain issues in the world but their product is currently in the harbor i think long long beach harbor so it's very close to getting back in stock so if you've been waiting for your tote bags and your light tap or your mats and your totes know that they're almost they're almost in your hands and i appreciate your patience so basically, I want to place the sticker in the hoop on the stabilizer, and I don't want any of the color touching the white. And that's the tricky part. So I'm going to show you from the top. And I just got to figure out how I drew it, because I drew it so that it fit. So it's got to fit. This is one of those times when I should stand up. I can't get things just right where they need to be. 
There. Oh, you know what might help? See, it's nice to get someone to show you because then you can do it. Don't do what they do. Do what they figure out you should have done all along. So if I spin this around until it fits, I gotta take a sip of water. I'm thirsty. Make sure you hydrate, you guys. It's summer. Unless you're in Australia. I sure did cut this or draw this. Yeah, cut it tight, didn't I? I think I can take a little bit here. One more little bit over here. So in the future, <laughs> you could do this kind of thing. You could have like a reference mark on each side. Kind of like what we do when using an embroidery machine to help position fabrics. We don't normally have to position the fabric carefully in the octahoop, so my brain didn't think about that. You would also have your sticker have the same reference marks. Looks like I got it. So now I just need to drop it there. Hi, Chase. I know there's noise. There's a weird noise outside. It's scary. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> he got scared by something. You coming up? Need a hug? All right, it's okay. <laughs> he got scared. He did, like, I didn't need to know the world's all right. It's okay. All right, you can't sit on my lap. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before he bumped me. So now I'm going to take this bridal illusion and I'm going to try to match the pattern and look through it. So I got to match that as close as I can, and I'm gonna mute myself for a second while I drink some water. It always sounds so weird when I do the playback after I mute. So what I'll do for for you for the VIPs for this pattern, I will I'll have the reference marks in the pattern. And now I'm just kind of looking to see. Oh yeah, that was a lot easier. Look at that. Hey. Now if I had done it before the show, I would have looked smooth. I'm a little bit here. You can use this to make ornaments and cat ears and lacy sleeves for costumes for like the uh, Renaissance Fair and cosplay. I'm going to be quiet while I do this. So what, it, what I'm doing here is pushing down again, making sure I don't push on the stick and tear in the middle here, and just kind of making sure it's really flat and taut, and I'm going to rub it onto the stick and tear now up here. And I can tell you this, that stick and rinse and stick and tear are designed to stick to one another. So now we have the fabric in a hole. And I can make it a little totter.
and before I begin I'm going to I'm going to do a running stitch along the outside all the way all the way around on the stick and tear free motion and just make sure that it's really stitched on there where's the stick and mints there we go all right now for the fun part what thread should I use should I go should I go for it and go really dark now when you look at lace sometimes ow this has a bunch of pins in it <laughs> there's where all my pins are I was sizing this I was, I was designing a wedding dress for a friend of mine on her body and I left some pins in it okay so they use different types of threads to create different looks that we could accomplish similar looks using a bobbin, having that kind of thread being in the bobbin. Today, I'm, it's just about just kind of showing the basics. And where'd that other lace thing? I, oh, here we go. Oops, I didn't hit transition. Here we go. So you can see how this is more along the lines of what we're going for. And we're going to kind of mimic it as best we can with a free motion process. I used to design and teach all kinds of wedding techniques to manufacturers. I mean, as the synthetic fibers were coming out to the market, I worked in the uh, LA area and I helped manufacturers design techniques for bridal and stuff. That's when I came up with the fishing line edges for wedding veils. And so what I'm going to do now is choose a bobbin. What kind of bobbin thread should I use for this? And knowing that the deco bob works really well with all of the weights of threads that I've found and know that we have a limited amount of colors. And the person that asked me to design this wanted a black. She's making a black sleeve, lacy sleeve. So the lingerie thread is is softer against your skin. So if you're going to make, I wish I had a picture of that. But if you're going to do a sleeve, if it, if the lace is going to be against against your skin, then then I would use lingerie thread in the bobbin, and even go as far as to use rayon thread in the needle, which I don't even think I own any right now. Actually, I do. I own a lot of rayon thread. I just rarely ever want to use it because it shreds more actually I found this which I believe is Wonderfills they wanted me to try it out I think this is their rayon it's called Splendor it definitely feels like rayon and I know some of you get really mad that I can touch thread and know what kind it is so it is their rayon thread and I used it last week, you guys, and I don't know how much I stitched with you, but it, it didn't shred, so that's a good sign. They, no wonder he wanted me to try it. So I'm using the Deco Bob Bobbin. Which is this one. By Wonderfill, and it is a polyester. I'm using it because it's the right color and I don't have to wind a bobbin right now for you guys. I'm just trying to choose a color of purple. I have more than one choice here. Left or right? Help me choose, you guys. I promise I'll wait, Amy. There's a 30 second delay, so I say it and 30 seconds later, I'm still waiting for you guys to answer. sure you can find black tool at Joann's I, I've never looked Pro, you know what I I did show you that other fabric which would work just as well fabrics they use for Halloween costume oh my god you all agree <laughs> huh? 
I've never had you all agree. That's so funny. All of a sudden I looked up. That's hilarious. Okay. And the kind of, and the needle to use would be, you know, as small a needle as you can possibly go. But it's also dependent on the kind of thread that you use, correct? So an 80-12 would be the thinnest needle, uh, smallest needle size before I'll start having shredding of the thread. And I don't like shredding thread at all. You can see this thread is 40 weight. And I know I was using an 80-12 last week. I didn't sew since last week. That's rare. Usually I'm in here for something. Now, for those of you who are new to this, you might be shocked by what I'm about to do. And that is not put on a free motion foot, but remove my snap-on adapter, or known as a snap-on apparatus, and put it aside. And we're not going to use a foot at all. And you can lower your feed dogs. I'm going to leave them up for a little bit so you can see it doesn't really cause a problem if you have an older machine. Is this fun or what? That's so cool. Okay, sorry. I'm enjoying it. It's nice that I'm having fun during the show, though, right? I deserve it. Got one of my handles here. First step is to do a running stitch all the way around just to help make sure that that's going to stay on there, that nothing's going to make it slip on the stick and rinse, because tulle is a really slippery fabric. Okay, microphone. And I designed the, the uh, stick and rinse to not have a shiny surface when it's facing you, so the light doesn't reflect in your eye. So another thing to consider is where to, oh, no, we're not, we're not doing that. We're doing the running stitch. So I'm going to lower the foot, even though there is no presser foot attached to the machine. Bring the bobbin thread up. We currently, we have one pair of the Apple Quick tweezers left, unless one of you ordered today. Know that we are about to... Uh, place an order with them. So I'm doing kind of like a little cross stitch. And know that you can. Yes, you can. You can do cross stitch by machine with the octa hoops. So that's going to really anchor that, but it's still big enough stitches to where I can clip it. And I'm going to hop. Making, this is about 12 millimeter long stitches. Now I can't see over the hoop there, which would be scary, but you can spin the hoop around, change the hole location. That's still too close. Go here. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And I'm just, don't look at the hoop because then you're likely to stitch on that hoop. So you can see how I can, I got to get this thread. Time to cut my bobbin thread. I don't like cutting it really short because I'm going to remove that stitch after. So we're, I'm looking where I want the needle to come down, not where I don't want it to come down. It makes sense. Just like driving, you don't look at the car coming at you. You look at the lines on the road, making sure you stay where you're supposed to be. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. See the feed dogs feeding under there and not causing any trouble. I don't know if you can see them or not. So my eyes are on my stitching. Should you not want to have your feed dogs coming up and down, you're more than welcome to lower them. And I generally do at some point so that because people ask, can you sew with them down? You don't sew with them down. I want to know you can sew with them down. <laughs> so elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Do any of you hear that in your head when you go to sleep at night? 
<laughs> Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And I have my cushions in the drawer. And these are the cushions I'm talking about. Where's my right elbow? And these are my bolster pillow pattern that you can find in the in the school. I, I got a bunch of rulers that are about to fall. As usual, I have a mess. Start out neat and tidy, not today, did I? And you put your elbow down, you want to rest your body. When you work with the octa hoops, it's unlike any other hoop system. You don't you don't hold the frame. You you write with the little handle. And when you write on paper with a pen, you put your arms down and you put your hand down on the paper. You let your your non-dominant hand holds the paper and your dominant hand writes. With the octa hoops, you can use either left or right hand. And and it's the same principles as writing. You have started saying that, Stephanie. <laughs> Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Only takes a second and it helps you. And so that's the position I'm in. I'm going to show you. <laughs> that's the position I'm in. Sounded funny. So you can see how I'm able to get really close. And I can see that I did miss or there I didn't do a perfect job on positioning. So I want to stay outside of that teal color and I got to cut that before I stitch it. And there's no way I'm stitching this whole thing today. This is a, a lot of sewing that is required to finish this. I do plan to finish stitching it by Tuesday's VIP Zoom course. There's something I need to mention. If you've been waiting to try the VIP I just turned on a free one week free trial thing. So you go to, you click on the VIP link in the school, which I believe I put in the video links. So after the video is over, you'll be able to see that. But when you try to, when you join the VIP, they give you a week free. And within this week, we're also having the once a month Zoom VIP group. And they asked me to make a purse. So we're going to do a, a crossbody. Thanks, thanks, Amy. <laughs> Who else did that? Amy and Brenda. Like, Brenda's like, I want a clutch. <laughs> so I'm thinking about a clutch crossbody cross bag clutch. So you can remove the strap if you want. And you, to try to make you both happy. So that is Tuesday at the same time as this week's show. Now, there's been a lot of talk in the inside of the school about time zones and I'm going to explain why and a lot of times when everyone has to change their clocks everyone goes well I live in Arizona I don't have to change my clock neener 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 <laughs> and everyone goes oh man I wish I didn't have to change my clocks know this you are glad that you change your time because you change your time and you don't really have to think about it the rest of the year but if you don't change your clock your time zone time zone changes twice a year. So right now, whatever time it is that you guys are watching me, well, when you guys fall back, I don't. So the time will change. My time zone will change, but it doesn't. <laughs> you guys are changing and I'm not. And it becomes confusing. So try really hard to read what I write in my posts because I try to explain it now. I didn't realize Zoom gave you your time instead of my time and you guys have gotten so used to being live with me every Thursday and figuring out what time it is to to watch if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell and hit all you will you will also have at least YouTube will help you not miss one of my lives to keep your brain from getting confused on the different times of the year and the different time zones and the different apps that you use to participate in all of the different ways that I'm making open to you because I'm trying to keep you guys happy, not drive you crazy. <laughs> and it, was, it was pretty funny. I feel bad, but it's, it's, it's so frustrating. It's so 
I, I got to get better at explaining why it's confusing to you guys. But know that you're not alone. So many people get confused by that. So I'm, I'm going to have like a section in the school for like coaching and I got to come up with a good name for it. And in there, it'll, you know, always you'll be able to click to see what time is it in Arizona. And then you still have to read though to know whether or not it's a Zoom. You still have to read what's in front of you on the screen to know and figure out that it's your time zone by knowing what your time zone looks like. What letters is your time, your area associated with? And uh, we're the same time right now as California. And then when falls back, we're the same time as Colorado. So maybe that will help you. The two C's. We're in between the two C's. I love it when we're the same time as Colorado because then my daughter and I are on the same time zone and we talk more. So elbows down, handle in the hole. Oop, I got the tool in there. Handle in the hole, elbows down. And if you can't put your elbows down, then push your machine further away from you until you can. And that takes all that tension away from be between your shoulder blades and makes you a much nicer person at the end of the day. So elbows down, shoulders relax, and I'm pulling my machine closer so that you can see. So I'm in an uncomfortable position, but I, I always am every Thursday to make it so you can see. So there we go. Now we know that the, the bridal veil tool cannot, and I'm gonna do another cross stitchy thing so that thread doesn't come out. And I'm gonna leave the thread a little bit long so I can cut it or so I can remove it easier but instead I'm just gonna raise the foot to release the tension so I can move it over and lower the foot and now I'm going to begin outlining and since the feed dogs are gonna move around and do, be distracting I'm gonna drop them <laughs> and I'm like should I have used the other machine there we go like quilting lace making has something in common with it. And the, what it has in common is that all of the patterns connect to one another. So as you proceed across, one design overlaps another. Some areas it doesn't have it, but in there, that's where you draw X's and stuff in a different pattern. This is challenging without the Maybe I'll turn it around and I can see better. Just can't see. See, I, I don't know. I, sh I can see better on the screen than I can in front of me. So now I can zigzag by moving the hoop left and right. And I don't, I don't have the ability to speak when I do that. <laughs> So I'll be quiet in between when I do these wider stitches. So I'm coming around, coming around the bend, and then moving the hoop, very running the machine slow. And it's a zigzag movement of the hoop. This is actually how the original the zigzag attachment for the Singer Featherweight behaved. It moved the fabric. And I'm going around it. And here we go. Now I'm going to do this one again. And I use the same stitch direction for all three of these, but I could have changed them. In other words, all of the uh, stitches are going left to right. And then I outlined it. And this is building lace over nothingness. And I have the pattern nearby, which is going to help me because I can't see as well because my machine isn't white. And inside of that little area where the needle is are these cute little flowers. So I'm going to do my best. I wonder if I can bring my light up on the machine.
Now I got one more level up. How do you know when you've laid down enough thread? Well, when you don't see the color of the ink below it. Now I could take this out of the machine as well and hold it up to the light. You can just lift it up and kind of see. And I can, and I'm, I'm definitely like not seeing what I'm doing because I can't get my face close enough and have you guys see. So I'm, it's not going to be perfect, but I want to give you enough to, and I can always do another one. So this, this little flower right here. And I would say that the most important thing about this is that you kind of try to make both sides look the same. If you mess up on one side, well, mess up the same way on the other side. No one's going to see the design. It's going to wash away. And now come back down here and this goes up, comes back down. And this is how you create the illusion of that, where did that go? That lace that I showed you, this one here. These little lines here where it's actually kind of a cord. Well, that can be mimicked by sewing multiple times across the void. Okay, so this one is, <laughs> I can't see this at all. Can't breathe. <laughs> is there anything you do that you can't talk when you do? If there is, tell me what it is. I want to feel normal. I need you guys to make me feel normal. Although I don't think that's possible at this point. Once you actually draw something, if it's not showing up enough, you can then go over it again. And you're, you're basically stitching over your thread. And you're going to be surprised how much more accurate you are than you would be on paper because you don't have the pressure. You don't... You don't have to squeeze this at all. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. There's another flower over here. And there's a circle on this flower. So I'll go around that circle twice. And then I can see that petal. Come up and I can see that petal. So relaxing, you guys. I think I would see this better if my room weren't lit so bright so that the camera can see better because when your your eye is dealing with all of those different light sources it causes the pupil to close and it makes it harder for you to see so having your light targeted here in the rest of the area around you not have as much light you should be able to see that a little bit better i'm coming around for a swirl And now I'm going to do that, slow the machine down and do a bigger stitch. Slow down. So you see how I slowed down? That's because I told myself to slow down. <laughs> you got to get bossy with yourself. It's all just a straight stitch. You could use a zigzag stitch on some of these things if you want. But I find it slows me down to have to stop and change the, the sewing machine settings. Rather, I just repeat the design and go over it again. And now if I want that to appear a zigzag stitch, I can now go over it, slow, slowing the machine down. There we go. And zigzagging over those rows of stitches. This is just a teeny tiny movement of my fingers holding the handle, not moving the hoop with my elbows raised, but rather elbows down and resting on the machine, light hold on the handle moving only fingers so you're stable you're united or connected to the earth by the machine being on a table and the table being on the floor 
and you're now resting on the table so it becomes much easier to be accurate on doing things like that. So what we've created here are different depths of the lace, which is what you see on lace. It'll, it'll have raised areas and lower areas and then really, really thin areas, which is depicted in this pattern by these skinny lines there. What is SF101? You're talking about spray adhesives? I'm being naughty today. I had a ginger ale in my refrigerator and I went, that sounds really good. So I'm gonna mute for just a second and then I'm gonna review the chat for a minute and see if I can answer the question you guys are debating. I noticed one of my lights that are normally covered by something to make it not harsh. The cover moved, so the lighting in here is harder for my eyes. And that explains that. So SF101. I'll tell you, I love my 3M permanent spray adhesive. Ugh, these bangs. However, it's permanent. So I gotta think that through for a minute because that's really actually lovely that if it is permanent, as long as it's not going to be the lace or be on the outside of the lace. And when I invented the stick and rinse, I was using that. I was using a water soluble stabilizer and spraying it with the 3M spray adhesive that I recommend all the time. <laughs> it's the one for photo mounts and uh, it's the oldest one that they have. It's their first, their first attempt was pretty good. They've come up with all kinds of different variations. If you have a, if you have a water-based spray adhesive, well, it may dissolve the, the water soluble stabilizer and you not make it so you can't use it. Remember that when you use a permanent spray adhesive, it changes from sticky and wet to repositionable. It's a completely different behavior that it has. The issue would be the areas in between the stitching. So you wanna make sure that you peel off the water soluble stabilizer in between the stitching before you rinse it away. And then any adhesive that's stuck to the water soluble stabilizer that is stitched into the stitches is covered and not tacky because it's between the bobbin thread and the needle thread and the tool. So I'm still feeling that the permanent spray adhesive would be a better option while you're waiting as I did do that for years before they had the technology to make a water soluble stabilizer or water soluble adhesive stick to a water soluble product without dissolving it. So does that help? Is that what you guys wanted me to talk about? Was the video frozen or were you thinking it was because I was muted and drinking my water? I don't know. I couldn't tell that it froze. And I hear in my ear, that's how I know if it freezes, but every once in a while I miss it. Hi, Carlene. Hi, Madeline. Hi, Roxy Diane. What's off topic? Stabilizer woven. That's our stick and tear and it's non-woven that I used. What is, uh, I don't see a complete question where, 
you're using SF101 today and having an allergic reaction to it. And it needs to be pre-shrunk. I would wash it. Get it in a lingerie bag and wash it and dry it and see if you're still feeling allergic and maybe the sizing. What is it that you're using it for? I don't think anyone minds you asking a question. It gave me a break. I'd like to move the uh, umbrella that's normally covering. See the shadow on my face too? So let's have you look at that for just a second while I try to fix that for myself. Oh, I feel so much better. It's amazing. How do you deal with it when you order stabilizer and they give you stabilizer with no label? Oh, okay. This is a, a wash away. This is the wash away that I didn't try yet. It's white. I will give you guys a screenshot of this label and I got it on Amazon because I, I wanted to try it because it's white. So this would be an alternative for black fabric when you can't get the color to show, but I have not tested this yet. So now I'm going to have to test it and see how well it dissolves. I don't know if it's adequate for lace. That's the label. And that's the barcode. I'll tell you what, I'll put a link in the description of the video after I'm done here. It's new. <laughs> I want to try it. And this is the other one. So it's funny, I found everything I was looking for before. This is another one. A wash away and... I'll know by touching it. I know that it's that's annoying to you guys, but I'll know by touching if you can use this for what I'm doing now. While you're waiting for hours, which is better than this for sure. You may need like four layers of this to compensate. That's what we would do for people that use sulky. We'd say use four layers of their, their solvy stuff and you'll get kind of the same result as our single layer. And the benefit of ours is it doesn't stretch. So this is theirs, this is ours, this is our stable rinse, and they're calling this, this is the other thing that drives us crazy, is a lot of people are trying to use our, our names, to. so that's why we put animals on our label, so that you know you're using our brand. But you can see this is a completely different behavior. And now the, the test, does it stretch? And absolutely, it stretches out of shape. So to get the behavior even close to this, which you only need one label, one layer of, you would need to layer more than one layer. There's two layers. 
So if you got four layers, then you have a similar, it still stretches a little bit. The issue is now the needle has to go through four layers instead of just one. And it makes the stitching, you're more likely to get skip stitch or have thread problems. And I, I promise that I'm thinking daily about that stabilizer and getting it back in for you. Glasses, oh there they are. All right, I'm, I'm ready to do a little bit more stitching. Now that we answered that question, I, I don't know what you're using that for. So it's a fusible stabilizer used for what? I have a lot of experience with allergies, so. If it, if I knew what you were using it for, I could give you an alternative. If it's for applique, our Fuse and Fuse outperforms all others, and I was allergic to 10 foods, and still to this day I have asthma and other conditions. So I can't just use any product as well. And our Fuse and Fuse has a dragonfly on the label, but it's fusible. That one's fusible on both sides, and it never peels up on you, and no gooey stuff gets on your needle when you use it. And when it's in your fabric, you can't even tell it's in there. So that's our Fuse and Fuse. We have another one that's fusible, it's Fuse and Stick, and that one has an adhesive on one side. It's designed so you can do an embroidery and then take it up and stick it somewhere and use it like on a pair of sandals or something like that. It's kind of fun. You guys want me to touch this one? I'm curious. I'm glad you're glad that you found us, Amber. I'd love it if you guys share. Oh, this kind of has a neat feeling. It'd be neat to have another option for you and then maybe another sticky one too. That's white. Ooh, I like it. I like it, you guys. Hey, Mikey. <laughs> he likes it. <laughs> oh. Now I just need to source it in large, gigantic rolls. But it's really, the proof is in the disappearing. It's really got a nice texture to it, you guys. I'm excited. So, this does not stretch. That's awesome. Sorry, <laughs> am I getting loud? <laughs> so now, where's my water? There it is. I almost drank it all. I guzzled. I knew I was going to need water today, and I didn't bring a container in here. Did I? Sorry. Yeah, I have a Starbucks cup. Hey, you guys can watch. Let's see. Oh, that's right. I have iron water. I'm not going to waste my drinking water. This is drinking water container, but it just has regular tap water in it. And here's our water. Soluble stabilizer. And my water soluble stabilizer dissolves in cold water, which is important when you're working with fabrics that can't get hot. Hmm. It's getting a little, it's getting that feeling. <laughs> it is starting to dissipate and this is, you know, relatively cool water. I'd say that it's a lot thicker than ours. So you may, may not want to run it down the sink. You want to dissolve it as much as you can in a 
separate container because <clears throat> if you have a lot of it, it can kind of clog up your drain. Look at that. It's really, I'm excited. Look at that, you guys. I'll put the link in my description. See, it's disappeared. Where'd it go? <clears throat> Excuse me, as an example, here's ours. So different texture, different. I don't want to waste a lot of it. And this is our stable rinse. Ooh, you guys, super exciting. That means you guys could order, you can order this and do it this weekend, you know, if Amazon still can deliver quick enough. <clears throat> what is with my th throat today? Is it polymesh? It doesn't have a name on it. I'll do what I did on theirs and kind of give it a little massage. <laughs> and then it starts the dissolving process. Well, it's a different texture, you know, but it, it does dissolve completely away. Kind of looks like a butterfly or a leaf. It looks like a leaf. Ooh, look at that. It's got a leaf pattern. Now, if I can freeze it in that, I could use that as a template for inking. <laughs> That's how my mind works. <clears throat> this is just uh, a no name. It doesn't have a cute name. It just says what it is. And that's uh, because it came from the manufacturer. So I'm, so I'm sourcing other options from our stick and rinse. Sometimes you want to see through it. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes it'd be better if you couldn't see through it. This would be one of those times. And since I know it will dissolve, I'm going to slap a piece of it underneath and it's going to make doing this a lot easier. And I promise as soon as I get off, I won't wait in case one of you that's making the purse next Tuesday. I just don't want to lose the labels. My thumb is sticky or snappy. The simplest things become challenging when you have a trigger thumb. All right. Got the label. Now I got to not forget what I did. Amy, you going to remind me in case I forget? I won't forget. I got to stick it somewhere. I love the clip it clips. <laughs> I'll stick it on my light there. I can't lose it unless that pops off. There. Okay, well, it ended up completely dissolving as well into a hole. Now we've got a little witch's brew of water soluble stabilizer, and you could do that and put water soluble stabilizer in a cup and wet it down and then brush it on things. Which is kind of what inspired liquid-based glue. <laughs> Very sticky. Stick it up in the roll. No. Because I'm going to carry it off to my office after the show. And look in my history and find out what it, where I ordered it from. And I have affiliate links, so when you click on the links in the description below my videos, you do I do make a little bit, not much, from anything you buy that you click on the link to buy from underneath or from in the video description after the video is over. So you don't have to feel bad. I want that air conditioner on. So I'm just gonna lay it underneath I hear angels singing in my head la now I can see <laughs> right on now I want to keep playing 
All right, here we go. I'm going to make a document on the on this stabilizer and source the manufacturer and, and make it available. I like it. We have a winner. I'm so excited. Something new that's actually really good. I'm going to mute, sip this, and switch cameras and start playing again. Start asking questions if you have any questions. Know that I'm not going to keep doing this, but I thought maybe I'd do the flower in the middle. The big, the big part. What, depends on what time it is. Go until four. My time. 20 minutes. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I know I have to keep the petals skinny, even though I really want to make them a satin stitch. I can't wait to get onto the, see how much better that is for your eyesight, you guys? Can you tell? Now I can see, whoopsie. All right, here we go outline and then I do that because we, we're actually building fabric when we're, do, when we're doing this and now we have something to anchor that zigzag on if you just zigzag it's more vulnerable and then go around again and it kind of corrals the thread come around another teeny teeny weeny little zigzag movement little movement of my hands. This is a great way to learn the skill of free motion because you're not having to do large areas. They're just little sections using different techniques. Tiny little zigzag. I hear itsy bitsy spider in my head. <laughs> oh, it's corny Claire day. If you've been wondering about joining the VIP group and thinking maybe people might not be nice and welcoming, know that everybody's so nice in there. It's just a bunch of really, really nice people. Supportive of one another. And my, and my school is kind of like a social media site, except for there's no, nothing but what we're talking about. There we go. It's all about creating. That's why it's called Create with Claire Rowley. It's not limited to sewing, not limited to embroidery, quilting, lace making. It's creating. And it's my goal to help everyone achieve their creative desires. I have 40 years experience teaching sewing, quilting, and embroidery, and manufacturers setting up factories. So I have a unique knowledge base, and I'm here for you, should you guys have any questions. <coughs> I'm so sorry about this icky throat thing I got going on today. We have a fire going on not far from us up in Flagstaff right now, and this is April 16th of 2022. Know that I am a safe distance from that fire. And uh, I slept with the windows open last night. I'm regretting that decision. I can't see these lines still because I'm so far from the... This is mind-blowing to you? Oh, it's so relaxing. I don't mean to blow your mind. It's really quite fun. Elbows down, shoulders relax, circle, corral the stitch, build the stitch, zigzag movement, not a zigzag stitch. 
So even a vintage sewing machine with only a straight stitch can do this, because vintage machines do have zigzag stitches, by the way. Now the first zigzag motion was created by the zigzag attachment, which is not to be confused with the zigzag stitch. The zigzag attachment moved the fabric like I am moving the fabric. A zigzag stitch, the needle moves side to side. And I totally messed this up a little bit, but no one's going to notice the slight oops that I did with regards to the stitches. How's it going? Think I'm doing all right? Can you see it? Come on, thumb. There we go. I feel like I have to invite my thumb to every event I'm doing with it lately. I promise to put the link in the description. I promise, promise. I'm excited because I didn't get a chance to test this. I think I ordered it a few, a few months ago. So in this one, I've just done the outline and these are tiny little flowers keeping my elbow pad in its place. And instead of doing a zigzag motion, I'm going to just keep making circles. And then I hear a thumping sound. I know I've done enough. Doing little circles, not sitting in one spot. We want to build, we're building fabric. It is being built on the tool. So at least when the water soluble stabilizer disappears, it's still got something there. I'm going to stick a little bit more here. <laughs> I lost my other elbow pad. Where'd it go? It rolled away. Maybe I should do a rectangular shaped elbow pillow design. See you guys, this is so fun. Won't this be pretty on the front of a purse? You're only going to know if you actually do it, you guys. you got to do it. No more chicken behavior. You asked for a purse. I don't just make purses. You know that I'm always going to go beyond the average thing. So i got to look at this and go, what, what's going on here? Oh, it's a little star. Still having a little bit difficulty seeing that. So Brenda, earlier you asked, how do you know when you've covered it up? This is why we are using a different color pattern for the different color thread. So that if you see teal through, then you know that you have used the, uh, you've covered, if, if you don't see teal, you know you've covered it. If you do see teal, you know you haven't. Slow down, Claire. Here we go. Sometimes I have to use my name when I talk to myself to get myself to do what I want. Know that I can't really watch the chat when I'm stitching. And there are members in here that have been hanging out with me for a long time that I'm sure if they feel they know the answer. Now, I, I got to connect those two together. This is what I was saying. It's similar to quilting in that every P, every design has to connect to the other design. Otherwise, you rinse this away and you'll have a piece of stitching off by itself that will fall away. It weakens it. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And I've decided I'm going to keep my stitch direction the same throughout this entire pattern. Which means the hoop is not going to be moved in this direction. I'm always going to keep it so that... And you can do this to help you to stay focused. Draw a line with an arrow on both sides. And that's your stitch direction. And if you do that, like in a different color than your template, in different places throughout the design, and this is the one that erases away, but I would use water erase. <coughs> I 
I got too much stuff in front of my machine. There's no room for my pillow. <laughs> How many times have you heard someone say, I need to move stuff. I don't have room for my pillow <laughs> when they're talking about sewing. <laughs> Most people would not know what I'm talking about. But once you know what I'm talking about, about a pillow, you're like, I'm not going to sew without a pillow. This is the tape that holds my ghost-like drawer shut. <laughs> it opens all day, all, all, all the time. <clears throat> yeah, it's like an upside-down heart. Clever. I like it. I like the way they did it. Elbows down. Shoulders relaxed. Find your where you are. Make sure you don't see teal. I saw a little bit of teal. But actually, I should go around this whole thing again before doing that. It's a really powerful pattern right here and large sections of area or space to fill in. So what I do when I know that I have a large area to fill in is I do what's called cross hatching. So I'll go across the design and then I build my zigzag over that. And we're in essence building fabric beneath the stitch. In the openings, the void in between the spaces of the bridal illusion, also known as tool, also known as wedding veil. Or bridal veil material, also known as fabric. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Sorry, I got a song playing in my head. It's a new one, though. At least it's not the chicken dance anymore. All right, so here's what I'm talking about. This area here all needs to be filled in, so I'm going to straight stitch across, and I'm going to kind of do a, a pattern that's kind of messy, just going across in a straight stitch, lots of stitches, little stitches. That's creating a fiber in between the little X's or squares of the loosely woven fabric. And it's going to be covered by the zigzag stitch, so you're not going to know that I did that. And make sure that you hoop, your movement is always in moving in the direction of that line. If I move and I see the arrows pointing in a different direction other than the horizon, then I know that I've shifted the hoop and it's going to make it look messy. And then remember, you can change the handle location to make it more comfortable for yourself. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And if I didn't say that that time, my shoulders weren't relaxed. My elbow was down, but my shoulders weren't. Slow down, Claire. There we go. So your slow machine gives you the ability to move the hoop in a large movement. With any other hoop system, if you tried to move the hoop that big of a movement while running the machine without lowering your tension for those movements, you would have issues with broken thread and possibly broken needles. A lot of times people go, oh, I can't sew without a foot. I'll break a ton of needles. Actually, you'll break less needles without a foot while running the machine. Most often people break their needle with the octahoops when they are not running the machine because they pick the hoop up and break the needle when they remove the hoop because there's no foot and the brain expects a foot to be there. See how pretty it's looking, you guys? And that's what's nice about the lace is that you have all these different variances or highs and lows and it's created by the size of the stitch. Instead of adding different cordings or different types of threads. And that outline really cleans it up, makes it nice. Oops, I started shifting the hoop. Okay, so I'm going to do the cross hatching. And now slow down, Claire, and do the zigzag motion. And this is how we get tapering without having to use a zigzag stitch without having to change the width of a stitch while moving your fabric, which is how we used to do monogramming. These same principles are applied to monogramming. So you've actually already kind of seen me do all of these things, but you saw me do it making a monogram on a towel. 
I really need to do a couple stitches down the center of that to make it fabric like and then stitch over that with a zigzag motion. Once again, making fabric out of thread by doing straight stitches, moving the hoop and filling it in without completely filling it in. Oh, the pillow. Yeah. Chase got my cookies last night. Little naughty puppy. I have these really expensive gluten-free cookies. I don't eat them very often because they have real sugar in them. And so I ate some and then left them in the wrong spot. And went outside last night and found the container outside. So he had his he had my cookies instead of his cookies <laughs> last night and just saved me from having the sugar, I guess. I can be a little bit grateful. What time is it? So we're it's a good time for me to ask questions. Do you guys get the principles of this if you're new to this uh channel? This is one of my products, I'm the inventor of this product, it's the Octi Hoops. And my bangs are getting longer, thank you. <laughs> Time to trim them. <laughs> my product line is the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. In case you popped in in the middle of this live feed, and it is live if you're watching on June 16th of 2022. And it is within the hour within the four o'clock, the end of the four o'clock hour, Mountain Standard Time, which currently, as of June 16th, is the same time as California Pacific Daylight Time, right? Yeah. So if you have a P, a, a D in the middle of your letters for your state, it's Daylight Time, and then S is Standard Time. And uh, I was mindless of that when I was talking about Pacific Standard Time is what I said, and, and then Everybody corrected me in the in the chat going, no, it's not daylight time, it's standard time. So now I'm super excited to finish this. And if you're in the if you haven't joined the VIP group inside of my school, create.clairowley.com, be sure to do so today because it's you have a week free trial or a seven day free trial and Tuesday of next week. At two o'clock Mountain Standard Time, which is silly because we don't ever change time. <laughs> it's Arizona Mountain Time is what they call it a lot of times because we don't change. If you join today, you got through Thursday of next week and Tuesday next week is the VIP live Zoom chat. And it's different because instead of typing, you guys get to talk using microphones and have your cameras on and everybody gets to know one another. And it's a lot of fun. And I'm going to use this design on the flap of a purse and hopefully have everything, all my ducks in a row and everything really ready for this because I'm trying to keep it within an hour. I rarely succeed at that. So you guys, if you're part of the free trial, you get to take the Zoom too. So it's a good opportunity to get a free class and you'd have access to the pattern so that you can duplicate what you're seeing here. Know that at any time, even if it's not June 16th of 2022, and you've yet to join the VIP group that you can do that right now and you have a seven day free trial and you can Check out all the different patterns and different videos that have been provided to only the VIPs as my appreciation as you guys are a support to my channel and to the school and help fund some of these projects that I bring to you. And blah, blah, blah. No, we're mountain. We're, we're Arizona mountain, mountain time. I know we don't change from that. We don't alternate. So that's what makes that, that, I think. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure that 
Carlene will straighten me out. <laughs> or Amy. And if I'm leaving out your name, it's because you haven't been sassy enough. We're going to have these little t-shirts made up for the sarcastic ones in the group. And know that usually they're sarcastic against me, not you. So you don't have to worry about having your feelings hurt in the VIP group. They're very sweet, loving people. They just pick on me, which is fine. If you liked what you saw in today's video, I sure hope that you'll take the time after this video is over to go outside and hit the like button. In fact, if you see the like button, then you're not watching the live because I'm about to end. If you have... Uh, not ventured into Create with Claire Raleigh or visited my website, creativefeet.com and seen all the different products that I offer. As I don't just offer the Creative Feet products, I also have the Caterpillar Light tablets and know that the Creative Feet fit all sewing machines, no matter how new or old your machine, they come packaged with adapters that make them fit all machines. I invented the first foot when I was 19 years old, 40 years ago. <laughs> and, uh, because of the iris, oh my God, I've been, uh, I haven't seen you in so long. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> so what happened is in the school, all of us, they, they unsubscribed a bunch of you. It, it happened like, I think in 2019, all of a sudden my school shut down. And I guess that at that time they unsubscribed everybody that was a part of, they didn't mean to, and I can't really be mad at them. It was the beginning of COVID. <laughs> you know, I forgive everybody of everything in COVID in that year, in uh, 2020. But the the school went down, and they unsubscribed everyone that was a member at that time. So a lot of people didn't know they weren't getting messages, and some people thought the school didn't even exist anymore. And now we're thousands of members in, and. So if you're watching and you're not getting the notices from the school, be sure to go into the school and check your notification settings. Make sure they're turned on. And Stephanie, you had somebody pass. I'm so sorry. I'll uh, say a prayer for you tonight. So basically, if you have yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, make sure you, you do. And when you do, you hit that bell and then click all. If you didn't know that, you have to do more than just click the bell. When you click the bell, you kind of follow me. But when you do all, then every time I go live, you and every time I upload any video, you are finding that video. It is time to trim these bangs. Oh, I'm so sorry, Stephanie. Okay, so once again, if you like this video, I sure hope that you'll hit that like button. And if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. And I will see you in the classroom. Love you all. Bye. Mwah.